Good morning. Good morning. It is good for us to be here together with each other by the call of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the Word of God. Uh, we are together at Emmanuel Lutheran Church, and we can be thankful for uh, the Lord's gifts. One of the things we hear sometimes is the Lord will never give you more than you can handle. That's not in the Bible. <laughs> sometimes he does give us. Sometimes he does give us more than we can handle, uh, but that doesn't mean he leaves us. He's there, uh, demonstrating his care and his ability for to take care of us in our lives. He is for you, and uh, that's an important thing to remember. Uh, if you ever feel like you're over your head, well, it's not over Jesus' head. Uh, he's there for you. Uh, a couple things. Uh, first, we do have uh, an opening. Uh, for our director, teacher, preschool position. If you know of anyone who would be interested in that, uh, please contact me or Cindy Barton. She is the head of the hiring committee, um, looking for someone who would be able to continue our preschool program, uh, Chrissy Moss. After 17 years of dedicated service to the Lord and to his children, uh, has, uh, uh, has taken a position elsewhere where she can use her gifts and talents, and we can congratulate her for that. Uh, then also, we are still taking our door offering, uh, so keep that in mind. And we do uh, have our, um, uh, our other offering as Mission Central, and there's a place where you can drop an offering off for Mission Central uh, in the parish hall in front of the LWML and Missions and Evangelism table. So we come before the Lord to receive his gifts. <clears throat>
O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me. Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, now, let us Psalm 18, 1 through 6. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. And I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompass me. The torrents of destruction assail me. The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I call upon the Lord. To be my God, I cry for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. You may be seated.
The first reading is from Job chapter 38. The Lord said to Job, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare, if you know all this. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. The second reading is from Romans chapter 10. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. O Lord, have mercy on us. The third reading is from Matthew chapter 14. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. O Lord, have mercy on us. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the hands. Blessed are 
Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, have I loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The text for today's message is Matthew chapter 14, 22 through 33. In our world, power provides the necessary means by which we live our lives. Power is a way in which we can control our environment. We need power, uh, gasoline, some sort of fuel in our cars in order to go from place to place. We need power, electricity, or gas to heat and cool our homes. We need power to safely store and cook our food. Our power needs are endless. If, some of, if, if, you, think some of our most mon if you think about it, some of our most mundane activities require power. When our power resources are compromised, we get kind of nervous about life. We begin to wonder what will happen if if we have a gas shortage or, or we can't get electricity to our homes, how are we going to live? How are we going to maintain our way of life? How will we maintain control? There's another different but similar type of power that we can talk about. It, too, is about being in control. But this type of power is about personal power. Personal power means that someone can influence and affect the world around them, people and groups of people. Power gives us great, personal power gives us great possibility. And we can see this in the world in which we live. There's national power and the leaders of a nation with a great military force can exercise that power and extend the will of the nation and the leader into the lives of other people. In the same way, if I have power, then the potential for personal accomplishment increases. I have greater ability to influence people so that they do the thing that I want. Sometimes we are in awe of people that have great power. Their charisma draws us. It is sometimes intoxicating to think that you might be in the presence of someone with thousands and millions and even billions of dollars. It can be very compelling. It seems that everything that they do is blessed with success, and they use that success in order to exercise their will. Maybe if I can connect with them in just a little way, then I might also have some of that influence. You know, Jesus is a powerful person. Our text today describes a time when the Lord Jesus Christ walked upon the water. And this shows the great power of our Lord. In this text, the Lord stands upon the ocean, transcendent, even controlling it. The waves and the wind, they obey him, and they do not affect his will. He affects them. He is able, and he is powerful, and he shows it simply by walking. There's no grand flurry of his hands. He doesn't speak some sort of incantation. He just does it. For the disciples, this means much more than what meets our eye. For the disciples, the sea was something to be feared. Their perception of the sea is that it was a dangerous place, that it contained, even contained evil, the demonic, and certainly creatures that would devour them. That's why it's not surprising that the disciples, when they first see Jesus walking on the water, as it's recorded in our text, think that he might be a ghost. If it weren't for the livelihood they gained from it, they would certainly stay away from the sea. They would avoid it because of its unpredictable dangers, both perceived 
and real. But Christ, he could walk on water. He could put his feet upon it and control it by his own authority. And of course, why shouldn't he be able to do this? Jesus was there from before the foundations of the earth. He created the world and he knows how it works. When God spoke, the word who is Jesus Christ our Lord went out and the world and all that is in it came to be. The simple act of walking on water is no surprise when you consider that Jesus himself is the agent of creation. But for his disciples' sake and for our sake, he gives a little demonstration that we can see with our eyes and understand. Why does he give this show? What's in it that Peter needs to see? What's in it that you and I need to see? We need to see that Jesus is powerful. When Peter recognizes Jesus, Peter is in awe of what is going on. And Peter's awe compels him to seek further evidence that it's truly Jesus who he sees and not just a ghost. Peter says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Peter wants reassurance that this is Jesus and that this being he sees walking on the water is actually his friend. He wants reassurance that Jesus is there and he is for him. Jesus told him to come and Peter gets out of the boat and Peter walks on the water. What an experience that must have been. The student gets to do what the teacher is doing. The human gets to do what God can do. And for a little bit, it works. But then Peter looks to the side, and he sees the waves, and he feels the wind. And Peter begins to sink, and he cries out, Lord, save me. Peter looks around. He loses confidence when he sees what's around him. In the whole situation, in Jesus, who gave him the ability to walk, he loses confidence. Peter thinks he's about to die, and he cries out to Jesus in a panic. And Jesus responds, and lifts Peter up out of his trouble. What happened? Why did Peter begin to sink? Peter looked to his own experience of the way things are supposed to happen. Peter had never before walked on water. He never subdued the sea and exercised power over it. To subdue the sea was outside of his ability and power, and he knew that. And he saw the winds and the waves, and he thought he had to do something, but he couldn't. And according to his life, experience. All that he could believe in was sinking. He believed in the power of the wind and the waves and his own powerlessness before them. According to his own vision, power, and understanding, there was nothing that he could do. Only help from someone more powerful could save him from certain destruction. In the moment of sinking, Peter knew that he could not rely on himself. Peter cries out in desperation and realization of his own weakness, and Peter cries out and says, Lord, save me, and the Lord reaches out his hand, and he takes hold of him and lifts him up, and it, it's a strange thing. Peter demonstrates he believes in the Lord's power to preserve his life and save him from the sea, but he also shows he's uncertain of the power that the Lord might exercise in his life. Even though Peter trusts in Jesus to take care of him, in the dire situation when he is sinking, he fails to believe in the Lord's care and power when he is walking. When faced by the wind and the waves, he thinks only of his own power or the lack thereof. The Lord says to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Peter doubted that according to Christ's command, with Jesus present, he could walk on the water. Peter turned to his own strength in order to walk. When the wind and the waves came, that trust in his ability to handle the situation faltered, and so did he. Only when the wind and the waters overcame him did he turn to Jesus. We can see that. He cried out, Lord, save me. But he didn't trust that according to Christ's will and command, and by Christ's power, he could walk on the water. The application of this in your lives is many and varied, but I think that there is a most important place for you to apply this. 
You know that you are sinners. You can see it. The word of God has come to you. And, he is, and the word of God, God has shown it to you by his coming to you. You have been accused and you cannot save yourself. You have seen the Lord by faith and you know him. And you are relieved by the revelation that on the cross Jesus paid the price. He died on the cross to save you from your sins. And you're in awe because of his power. But how often do we fall back into the law? We fall back into thinking that we have the power or the ability within to walk as Christian people, but then things come up and they frighten us and scare us and they remind us of our frailty. How often have I heard it even in Lutheran circles? I hope I've done enough to get to heaven. Then we have the deep realization that we have not done enough on our own to get ourselves to heaven, to save ourselves. We are walking by faith, but then suddenly we see our sin and sinfulness, and these are so big that we think we must do something, but we cannot. We cannot save ourselves. Only when we realize that we cannot save ourselves and believe in the name of Jesus is it that we say, Lord, save me. And the Lord is right there all the time. He, you are his child, and he loves you, and he saves you. In another way, and less important but connected way, this text applies to our daily walk also. Sometimes the Lord does call you out of your comfort zones. He calls you out of the boat to walk by faith and to trust in him as you live your vocational lives. We are called to live as Christians doing our daily tasks, trusting in the Lord, trusting in his call in our lives, even in the face of hardship and difficulty and even persecution. You come out of the boat a little ways, and then you say to yourself, as you look around, it's just too much. What Jesus asks, I cannot do. And you begin to sink, and then you do cry out, only by faith, Lord, save me, and he does it. Right away, he extends his hand and saves you from the failure of, from, fa from your failure, from your failure, from your sin. He gets in the boat with you and you receive again that which you need the most. You receive his forgiveness, but Jesus teaches you. He says, oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? Jesus has given you his spirit. It is his desire to exercise authority in and through your life. Jesus gives you his commands in scripture and he is not there for himself. He is there for you. Our Lord Jesus, who is all-powerful, does not exercise his power in order for his own benefit, but he exercises his power for you. You can trust in him, believe in him. Sometimes the Lord's commands seem too big, but the power to follow his command comes from him, and you can trust that power. Don't sweat it out. Don't be afraid. Do the work and live the life that he has given to you. He wants you to live the Christian life and to do so boldly and without fear. There is a lot of fear in our land, but he calls us not to live in fear, but to live in trust and faith in him. He wants you then to proclaim the good news of forgiveness of sins to those who are, are around you, even when it's hard, and he wants you to do it according to his spirit, your gifts, and your place in life. The Lord is there. He will exercise the power of his word in your life, the same power by which God created the world. He will exercise and does even today exercise the power of his word in your life, the same power that Christ exercised when he died upon the cross and rose from the dead. He will exercise the power of his word in your life, even as he does today, even as he did in your past, the same power by which you have received the redemption that he won for you on the cross. He has given you, will give you, and has already given you the power of his word in your life, the same power by which the Holy Spirit calls you to live. And when he calls you, you can walk according to his command and promise. The hard thing is that sometimes we're afraid. The hard thing is that as we walk, even according to Christ's command, we falter before that which is greater than us, 
and before that which we cannot control. This includes our own sin, and this includes facing the evil that surrounds us. This includes even sickness and illness and injury and even death. When you falter, the Lord is right there to lift you by the hand and to save you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He is standing there, right there with you, and he saves you. Trust in the Lord with all your might and lean not on your own understanding. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please stand. The peace that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We sing the canticle. <laughs> mentioned earlier, we do continue to take our offering at the door. We have a couple of additional prayer requests for today to keep in mind. Uh, Linda Azure uh, uh, is on hospice. This is the sister of Linda. 
uh, score, and uh, we want to pray for them and uh, Linda's entire uh, family. Also, we want to pray for uh, George Ressler's uh, George Ressler and his family as well, uh, they lost uh, a niece uh, this past week. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Let my cry come to you. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you want done through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord our God, we do not presume to know your ways or inform your judgment. We ask you to grant us your Holy Spirit so that we may apprehend your ways and know your Son, Jesus Christ, by faith. Give us wisdom that we may trust in your word amid the stormy seas of this mortal life and be safely delivered from all danger onto the eternal shores of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, we see the great need and ask you to raise up those who will serve us as pastors, teachers, missionaries, and in all church work vocations. Bless church planters and the younger congregations that they may endure. Bring hope and renewal to all struggling congregations and to the pastors who serve them. And do not let fear keep us from your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, we ask you to bless us, our nation, and those who lead us. Guide all elected and appointed civil servants in their judgments, that we may know justice in our land and peace among the nations. Make us especially mindful of those who need our special protection, the unborn, the aged, and the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, we pray for your blessing upon the schools where children learn, especially for the schools, universities, and seminaries of our church. In this time of uncertainty, give your blessing to all places where your people gather to teach and learn your word. Help us remember that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, we remember the sick, those who suffer, those troubled in mind, the grieving and the dying. Deliver them according to your will and grant them comfort of your word in their afflictions that they may depend upon your mercy in every circumstance. Lord, we especially pray for Linda's sister. We ask you, Lord, to be with her in this time. And Lord, we pray that you give her the comfort that you call her your child and that she can rest secure in you. And Lord, we pray for her family. We ask you, Lord, to be with them and protect them and give them also, Lord, the assurance of your love and the forgiveness of sins. Lord, we also pray for George Ressler and also his family as they mourn the loss of his niece. We ask you, Lord, to remind them uh, that you are risen from the dead and that as we believe in you, we too will follow you through death into new life. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, we give thanks for the saints of old who trusted in you in life and now rest in Christ from all their labors. Deliver us from all evil and lead us through all temptation so that at last we may join them in the marriage supper of the Lamb in your kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, we pray you to be our light in darkness our strength in weakness, our courage in fear, and our peace in distress. Speak to us by the voice of your word, 
that we may call upon you in the day of trouble and confess your saving name before all people. Hear us on behalf of ourselves and those for whom we prayed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you.